Hey everybody, today we're going to flush a tankless hot water heater. Instead of paying some of the outrageous prices I've seen for these kits on the internet, we're just going to purchase the parts separately and save a lot of money. This is really easy to do and helps remove the calc buildup to prolong the life of your unit. Protect your investment and keep it running efficiently while saving money. Let's get started. Mine is an outdoor unit, so you can see that there's a boilerplate here covering where the control pad would be. My pad is indoors shown here, and my vent is on the side here instead of a stovepipe up top. These service valves should have been installed by your plumber when the water heater was installed. You could see that they're available on Amazon. If you don't have them, you can't do this job. You're going to need a plumber to install them. Just don't have that plumber install them, because he should have known better. We further see that mine is a natural gas unit. Procedure for the electrical unit would be very similar. We'll now talk about the items that I bought in support of this project and get a running tally of the cost. This is a Superior Pump 91250 in quarter horsepower. Comes with the correct fittings. $45. Two pack of six foot generic rubber washing machine hoses came out to $17. For completeness, if you don't have a five gallon bucket, they sell them at Lowe's for $3.50 and you can probably get them at the dollar store for a dollar. I don't consider vinegar to be part of the kit. It's more of a cleaning agent that you're using in the kit. But just looking on Amazon, we're seeing a 64-ounce jug is about $2.40. And maybe you would need two or three of these jugs. We can see the total cost for our kit came out to $65.43. Less than half of what was offered on the internet or in big box stores. All links for these items will be available in the comments below. So looking at our supplies, we got our vinegar. We got our bucket. We got our hose kit, and we got our pump. On top of the pump, I have a small adjustable wrench, and that's to remove the caps of those brass fittings. They can be a little difficult to take off. The first and most important step in this process is actually warning people that you could be shutting off the hot water in the house, make sure nobody's using it. That could be really bad. Having done so, I just simply hit the on-off button on the panel right here. If you have a gas heater and you want to shut off the gas line to the heater, you could do so. It's not necessary, but if it makes you feel comfortable, go ahead. This valve right here shuts off the cold water main coming into the water heater. You can see that it's blue. We turn that perpendicular to the pipe to shut it off. This valve right here used to be red. It's the hot water returned from the heater to the house. We're going to also turn that perpendicular and that's going to shut it off. I'm using an adjustable wrench just to break the tension to be able to remove these caps. They've been sitting on there for a while. So now that it's loose, I'll just spin them off by hand. And then we'll be repeating the exact same procedure with the caps on the hot water side, only loosening it with the wrench to be able to spin them off by hand. Again, I'm using the small wrench just to get this small valve turn in a little bit, loosen it up because it's a little tight. And then with my fingers, I'll be able to turn that valve all the way open. And this will start the draining of the heater. Come around to the hot side and repeat that process again with the wrench, turning it open. You can see that the way it's draining, there's sort of a vacuum in here, so eventually when enough water drains, it'll just pour out. While this is draining, there's a filter right over here on the cold side that I want to remove. I'm going to loosen it. It's a nylon fitting, but still, I want to loosen it first with a wrench. Now I could turn it with my fingers. And this is just a plastic cover. The filter's going to be on the inside. It's a, a metal mesh with an O-ring. There's the cover, removed. So I'm trying to get the filter out of the pipe, but I realize I'm going to have to use my pinky to be able to fit it into the filter, get stuck, and then pull the filter out with my finger. And that seems to work quite easily. And there's the filter right there, no problem at all. If we look at the filter, we can see that the fatter side points outward, and the thinner end of the filter points inward. We can see this side has a thinner lip. This goes inward. Do a quick inspection for debris in the pipe here, but I don't find any. Everything's fine. Wash the filter off with water and palm olive. Not hot water because I don't have any. But I just wanted to rinse it off first, shake it off dry, conduct a quick visual inspection on it, make sure it's not damaged. Fill a small container with vinegar. Just a little bit. And I'm going to drop that filter into soak while I set up the other stuff. Give it time to decalc. Put our bucket into position. We'll unpack our hoses. There are two of them in this pack. And I'll just hand tighten them on to each one of these receptacles on the hot and cold side. Do the cold one first. And we'll tighten on our hot one. A 
I noticed on my particular model there's only a couple of threads on the fitting. On my hose there's more than twice as many threads so you don't get a tight fit. So what I did was I went into the yard to the garden sprayers and I got a gasket from two of them and I'm putting one into each of these hoses to make the gasket twice as thick and that allowed mine to tighten down tight enough so I didn't get any wiggle in the back which told me it would be a watertight fit. If you get wiggle in the back, I'll show an example of tightening down with some wiggle so you'll see what it looks like. I won't tighten it all the way. And you see that wiggle? This is when it's really tight. There's no deflection at all. No deflection. These are watertight. I've looked at ones online that may be shallower than mine, but I can never really tell from the picture. And quite frankly, it's easier just to double up the gaskets. Now that that's all out of the way, I'm going to gently, very gently snug them down with the adjustable wrench. Just a little bit more than I could turn them by hand, but not really tight. Got a rubber gasket. It doesn't need to be very tight. And then I'll do the hot one next. This fitting that comes with the pump will be used, so we're going to screw this on now, nice and snug. This will be followed by the cold side connection onto that fitting. And then we'll use the adjustable wrench to gently snug that down. Lower the pump into the bucket and unloom the power wire. With that, the plumbing for our system is now all set up. This is not required, but I'm using a pool basket filter because I'm curious to see what debris I could catch on the pipe that comes back into the bucket. This will also stop me from sucking up whatever is caught from the return and pulling it back into the system. You can see it's just made of nylon and I'm going to secure it with a cable tie to the end of the hose. So I'll make that modification now. Again, this is not part of the job. It's just something that I want to do out of curiosity so we can see what comes out of the unit. Wrap the cable tie around, and snug it down, and throw it back in the bucket. I'm going to pull that filter out of the vinegar now. It's been sitting in there a while. I'm going to wash it off with some fresh water and take a look at it. Everything here has been cleaned now. We're going to put this right back into the unit. You see the thicker sides pointed towards the outside as I push the filter back into the unit and seat it all the way in. Place the O-ring back over the cap. Now I'm going to hand tighten the cap back onto the filter. You should see it all the way down, no problem at all. And just to check that my fingers didn't slip, I just give it a little nudge, but I see it's fully tightened, it's fine. Now I'm going to pour all the bottles of vinegar into the bucket. Cable tied the hose to the handle so that the pressure from the water doesn't blow it out of the bucket. As it turns on, you can see that it'll first purge air out of the system, and then it'll settle down. There'll be an even flow of vinegar going through. Make sure you check all the fittings, that there's no vinegar leaking or spraying out anywhere. So I'm going to let this run about an hour and a half, and come back every half an hour and check on it. Make sure everything's looking good, it didn't spring a leak, anything like that. But we're going to get started now with a timer. 30 minutes later, and I don't expect to see any major change. I do see a little discoloration on the nylon, but this is just an inspection, make sure everything's okay. So I'm going to take a look around, and then I'm going to come back again in another 30 minutes. 60 minute inspection, again, nothing terribly interesting to report. We're at the 90 minute mark now, it's time to shut it down. I'm going to unfasten the hose from the bucket. And remove the cable tie holding the nylon filter from the end of the hose. There's definitely some debris weighing this down in the bottom. Let's have a look. And yeah, there it is. There's a whole bunch of this stuff came out of the unit. A lot of the solids were dissolved, obviously, by the acid, but this is the remnants. I'm not going to spend too much time trying to figure out what this is. I'm just happy to know that it's no longer in my heating unit. That return hose is now dropped to the ground. We're now going to remove our hose from the cold side so we can run fresh water from mains up and through the hot side and out the hose. This will allow us to flush the entire system with fresh water 
and allow it to come out that hose on the hot side onto the ground without just splashing out the side of the unit. So I can take the adjustable wrench just to start the loosening of this hose. I'm going to take this hose right off. Now I'm going to close this valve. And I'm going to start slowly opening this cold water main valve to allow water into the system. I'm not going to open it all at once, but eventually I'm going to open it up all the way. This will run for just a few minutes to allow the vinegar to completely flush from the heater. At which point I'll shut off that cold main again so I can close off this hot side fitting. The hose is loosened and removed from the connector as I did on the cold side. And I remember to collect those extra gaskets that I borrowed from other appliances in the yard. I'll be needing one of them right now to spray down the unit. What I'm trying to do is remove any vinegar that may have splashed in and around this area as well as cleaning those fittings right there that were connected directly to the vinegar. So when I put the caps on, it's just not sitting there with vinegar in it. I'm just trying to clean this up right quick, that's all. Now I'll drop the protective caps back on, starting with the cold side. Just screw it down hand tight, that's it. Same thing on the hot side. Hand tight. Make sure this hot service valve is now in the closed position just like that perpendicular. Cold side already was, but it never hurts to check. If you turned your gas line to the unit off, turn it back on now. I'm gonna turn my hot water on on the closest sink to stop a phenomenon called water hammer when I turn the pressure back on. I'm gonna turn the hot side valve back to the open position, leading back to the house. Now I'm slowly gonna turn the cold water mains back on. Make my way into the garage to shut off the sink, and we're ready to test. I'll observe the in-use light over here, as well as the temperature of the water as I turn on the sink. The flow was detected, and the water heated up quickly. Everything seems to be working fine, so we're going to continue on. If we don't clean up this equipment good, this is the last time we're going to use it. It's just going to rot away, so I'm going to wash out these hoses really good. Not just the inside of the hose, but also the connectors. You may want to consult with your local authorities as to how to dispose of the vinegar. Mine is going to be neutralized with soda ash I have for the swimming pool. Pull the pump out off to the side, let it drain for a few minutes. My bucket's been emptied, I'll give it a quick rinse and clean it up. Once it's clean, I'll start filling the bucket up. So I reintroduce the pump back in. I'm going to fill it up with water, sort of give it a head start, because I'm going to plug the pump in again. That's why I kept the hose connected so I have a place for the water to flow out with the pump running. And I'm going to let that run for about five minutes or so to flush the pump adequately and remove all the vinegar from the system. Then I'll pull that hose out. And I'll be sure to shut the pump off before it reaches the bottom so I'll run over to the power cable. We'll pull this out now. Let this pump drain and dry. We'll disconnect the hose from it. And this hose, I'm going to give one last rinse on the connectors to be absolutely sure that all of the vinegar was removed. Everything clean, dried out, ready for the next use. I hope you enjoyed this video on the descaling and maintenance of the tankless water heater. Hit that like button down below. It helps me out a lot when you do. Hit that subscribe button for more videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?